how do, how do I present myself on social media? I used to post just very like <laughs> no content. I didn't I didn't really post a lot on Instagram. Mm. And then I think that that was my that was the starting point for me where I was like, okay, now I kind of know how to how to make music and yeah. I'm happy with my music now. So now what what comes next? How do I how do I get my music out there like and be and make it visible? Mm. Because it's cool to have music out there. You can self release your music, but if you don't promote anything, then it it's just there. You won't you won't have an audience. Nobody will listen to it. Mm. Hey gang, how you doing? It's Wednesday and it's interview day. Right today, I've got a guest. It's not Lars, <laughs> and he's super tanned. Look at his tan. Oh okay. shit! So today, I welcome my course member. Uh, for another student special, Alex Lathors. He joined the course in 2022. Has been absolutely smashing it. As a producer, he resides in Freiburg. Yeah. Freiburg in Germany. Um, and he plays Tech House. He makes Tech House. Um, he's had some great releases so far on people like Wildcard and Kitball and, and one coming up on Tool Room, which, which announced, got announced this morning, which was buzzing for you dudes. So we're going to chat about production, chat about Tool Room, chat about releasing music. And a whole lot more. Welcome in, dude. I've got I'll give a little cheer. We'll a little... <laughs> um, hey, thanks for uh, for the invitation. Yeah, this is fun. <laughs> it is. But um how, how welcome to the shed. Thank you, thank you. It's uh, really cool to be in the legendary uh, disco show. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool, isn't it? Yeah. I always I come out here and I'm like I'm like like, like little things in here like this and you can't see on the screen and, it, and it's just I like that sort of stuff. It's just it makes me cheery. When you're feeling sad, yeah. you can come out here and sit in here and, it's, and it makes you feel sad. It makes you feel cheery. Um, yeah, Loz looks different today. Yeah, he's got a tan for starters. Yeah. Oh, no, the hype train's gone off. Hey, yeah. hype train. Loz has hair extensions as well. Yeah, Loz has hair extensions and, 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 and he's got a tan. So before we get started into the serious stuff, as you know, on my streams, we like a meal deal. And we just had a meal deal. Yeah. <laughs> I, took Loz, I took Alex for a meal deal. Um and we went to the co-op. Uh, what did you have for your meal deal? Um, my meal deal today was a egg um sandwich. Yep. And to have something uh, something healthy with it, I had like the the carrots with the hummus. Nice. That was. How was the carrots good. and the hummus? It was good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like I like stuff like this. I just like don't like to cut it, but it's already been cut, so that's. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, it's the, uh, and what else did you have in your meal deal? Uh, we had live meal deal. I can't believe it's funny as. <laughs> um, uh, the yeah, like the, the Coke Zero. Yep. That I, that I didn't drink. Uh, to be honest, I'll, I'll probably have it on the plane uh, later. I do that. Um, I didn't drink mine either. I I put it in the fridge when when they want to have drinks at some point during the week. Yeah. And they use it as mixers for vodka or rum, or it's and it just amazing. goes in the fridge. I just have a coffee or two. Big hummus fan himself, surround sound. Oh yeah, you won't be able to take it on the plane. You have to take it on the train. It'd be a train drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, I'll go on the plane and on a car and then on the plane. <laughs> oh yeah, you 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 got to get a camel to the station yeah. and then you then you get the car and then you get a train and then a car and then a plane. Yes. Holy moly! It's yeah. been a fun journey home. It, it it's it's all been a fun journey so far. Just to be here, I I, I came in uh, from 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 actually from Switzerland uh, yesterday, super early in the morning. Why were you in Switzerland? Because you why why did you go to Switzerland? And because I'm living down there, like right. the closest airport to my to my hometown is uh, in Basel. Actually, it's not even in Switzerland. It's it's in France. It's really weird because it's where where Germany. France and Switzerland meet, yeah, and the airport is right there, very close to all of the three borders. So it's called Basel Mulhus. Uh, sometimes they say Freiburg with it, yeah, but it's like fifty kilometers away from Freiburg. No way. <laughs> so yeah, and I flew in from there because it's the closest airport. That's cool. And then why why are you here in the UK? Um, yeah, well, we we've got um, we've got invited by Tool Room um, in the first place. Yeah, to do a little bit of content and promotion stuff for and uh, our new record that is coming. I think we'll yeah, we'll definitely talk, talk about that in a bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and, so, we, and we're definitely not going to play a little bit of it. We're not. It's apparently embargoed. We're not allowed to play it. We're That's never. That's definitely not happening at all. No, no, definitely not happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So 
not happening. But um, yeah, I uh, that's that's kind of the was the reason in the first place why yep. I came here. So um, and then Lars asked me if I wanted to to come on the stream with you, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, why not? I mean, I'm here, and it's it would be it would be a waste of time to just come here and yep. just be in just be with two room. So it's it's really cool to 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 do that here. We meet you in person today, and hang out with the boys and stuff. It's, it's always fun journeys. It's it's my third time in the UK now, and I never regret to to jump on the plane and come over here. Nice. Okay. Right. So let's get started. So I thought I'd just get the, you to introduce yourself and give you kind of introduction to who you are and talk about yourself a little bit. Yes. So uh, I'm Alex Lautartz. Um I know that you guys have problems. Uh, with the with the last name yeah like i think i think i hear various versions in german we would say lauthals yeah but obviously it's it doesn't matter how you how you spell it yeah <laughs> how you pronounce it so yeah i'm um i'm uh, based in germany obviously yep from freiburg which is like a town like a, it's a city but it's not like a huge city yep um have you lived there all your life no Okay. I'm I'm initially coming from Frankfurt, okay, which is uh, more in the middle of, of of Germany, where all the banks are and stuff. So yeah, that that that's where where I come from um, originally. Okay. So um yeah, and I make music uh, since a long time actually, um but uh, not always under this artist name. There have been projects before, and um, what was you doing before? Um, I I had a different artist. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I've I I did electronic music uh, quite quite long. It wasn't really successful before. Right. Okay. So I uh, had different phases in my life. Like also, uh, there was a phase or a time where I didn't really make a lot of music at all mm. because of some some stuff that we probably going to talk about later. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And yes, I've I've been releasing on uh, on a couple of cool labels in the in the in the last months. Mm. Like I had a release on Wildcard, um, on Shapeshift, then the the big one on Kidball uh, this year in February. It came out in February. Yeah. If you haven't heard it yet, um, we're gonna play that in a bit. Yeah, wicked. Yeah. It's it's something I'm really proud of um, because it's yeah. There's a cool story behind that one. Yeah. So, were you DJing before you were making music, or were you making music and then you were DJing? Where Where are we at with that kind of that journey? Um, oh, it's hard to say actually. I think I I've been playing music, like instruments, very early. I started playing the guitar when I was six. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and then I uh, I moved on to I think I started with DJing. I got like a like a pair of old uh, bell driven turntables. Nice, like <laughs> nice. Really, really bad ones. When they I was, were such a dick to learn to mix on as well. Yes, like L you couldn't you couldn't touch the the the, the no. record because the the needle would jump. So it was it was a little bit of a pain to learn to learn proper beat matching and mixing on those turntables. Mm. But in the end, it it got me to a good place mm. and. Um, yeah, I started. I started with different music. Actually, I started with breakbeat and hip hop. Oh, did you? Yeah, that that was kind of my the start for me as a DJ. Breakbeat and hip hop. I had I had, I had sound labs sound labs decks. Their sound labs were terrible. <laughs> so you was that what you were listening to when you were growing up? Yeah, I mean, I had different. I had different styles. I was into actually. Mm. I started like probably with rock music. Nice. I mean, I've been playing the guitar, so what? I was into like punk rock and like nice. offspring oh one, nice one of the bands that i was listening to when i was in school was the offspring and blink 182 nice those yeah nice those those guys that have been in the charts as well so not the very underground stuff yeah yeah and then lots of ska punk as well like real big fish and less than jake yeah mad caddies that was kind of like, real rocky and real like guitar-y yeah. and yeah 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 but like, your parents listen to that guitar is that your is that bands your parents thing and what mm, they listen to what they listen to my father likes blues like a lot of blues yeah um yeah maybe it's coming a little bit from there i i see it myself when i when i listen to bluesy rock yeah i it, it always catches my attention somehow so probably it's something <laughs> there's something inside of me that comes from from there yeah 
Yeah, yeah my mum was always queen, queen and the carpenters. And so, yeah, a lot of my crazy comes from that, I think, from, from Queen. Uh, yeah. A little bit. Uh, like, I'll still put that on and still absolutely love it. Oh, Loz likes blues as well. Yeah. Blues is amazing. It's because it's got a lot of soul. So you're producing breaks and hip hop and... Were you producing breaks and hip hop? Were you? No, I I started DJing. Yeah. And then because I, I think I started messing around on a DAW at some point. Yeah. I, I I don't think it exists anymore. It was called Sonar. Oh. Like, I don't even know if this company still exists. Whoa. And I couldn't do a lot with it. Yeah. Um, when what years was this? When was this? What years were we talking? I think it was. I was not yet i was like 15 or 16 so it's 32 i'm 34 now so it's almost 20 years ago probably. whoa it's mad when you do that isn't it? like i i yeah, did like, i did that something the other day and i was like i was like oh yeah it was the other it was a couple of years ago and then i was like actually it was probably like 20 years ago and then you're like yeah. whoa where the fuck did that time go yes 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 I'm, it's crazy but i was just messing around on it and i think my computer couldn't even handle uh, <laughs> what i was trying to do so it, it was just like playing just a toy mm. and like I, i've been using software like fruity loops as well yeah reason was a lot of fun i used to like reason yeah. i used to i used to produce i used to go i used to get the train to london to work at, when I, at a nightclub and i used to use reason on the train and then yeah. just literally sit there with reason on the train and i yeah. used to love playing with reason because you plug things and move yeah, things. yeah 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 it feels like a little bit like more like an instrument and like yeah, you're yeah. working with with those rags and you can yeah. plug things in and yeah i think it it really i found it really interesting because you can get very creative with it and you can like the sound design stuff is right in front of you yeah and you don't have to think about the arrangement or yeah yeah just try to make cool sounds and that's what i used them. to like to i used to like doing that just sitting there making cool sounds and then yeah. and then putting a kick drum and then and that'd be about it i think so <laughs> And then I'd probably get to London by then. But yeah, I agree with you. Like, no one ever intru- no one ever mentions rebirth. Yeah, rebirth was the acid part of it, wasn't it? Did you use rebirth? It was part of re. It was part of reason, and it was like that. It was like the three hundred three vote. Is that right? Was it with the three hundred three of the? And you could really make like really cool squelchy noises with it. I, I don't think I've been using rebirth a lot. There was like a blue. I think it was the blue synthesizer that I was that I was into the most, mm. and a green one. I only remember the colors. I don't even remember <laughs> the names. <laughs> there was a blue and a green one that were the most interesting in my eyes. And then you moved to house music and tech house. When did you start doing that? Yeah, I I don't remember when. I think it, I think it was it started to paralyze uh, to, to 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 be parallel. Parallel, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> I I've been I've been into hip hop and I had friends um also rappers yeah and I was trying to make beats for them yeah. And then we had, uh, yeah, and then on the side, I just thought it would be cool to make a house tune. Yeah. And that was kind of the start where I really got into that. Oh, it's really cool because you don't need a rapper. You don't need anything else. Mm-hmm. You don't need to to even, like, record a guitar. You can just create a whole track mm-hmm. on your computer. That That's what got me, yeah, what, what fascinated me about the about music production in general and especially about electronic music because you you can be just by yourself and make your whole track that's cool and then and then you did touring courses touring academy courses yeah 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 but that that's that's been way like far later right because yeah i i, I actually got into the, the touring academy in 2021 so it's no just, way yeah just that's two so years soon. ago about about two years ago i i've been on the production certificate yeah with ben remember that was really uh, it was really eye-opening for me did that change your way to production did it yeah. change what you were thinking about production did it change yeah. it changed a lot for me because it really got my my production very streamlined because i mm. it's the first time in my life that i had like a like a, a guideline kind of because before it was a completely unstructured process for mm. me it was like I do this and that and try this and it was there was no structure in it. Right. And through the courses it was yeah, I found some structure, like uh, like what where do I start? What can I do next? And also it gave me a lot of ideas on what what you can do to make a to to achieve the, the sound I, I wanted to achieve. That's cool. So that yeah, that was that was the starting point for me where my yeah, where my productions started to become actually 
on a on a professional level. Did you do so? You did the production certificate. Did you do any others, or was it just that one? Yeah, yeah. I've been on the Creativity Unlocked as well. Oh, that's such a good course. It is with Dean Ramirez. Yeah, he's he's they're both great. Like Ben and Dean, they make yeah they they give you so many cool ideas what you can do. Like especially on the Creativity Unlocked course, you get yeah really cool ideas. Yeah, on what you can do, how to. T- how to tweak a vocal i think that's that's kind of the most important thing i think we did three weeks just about vocals mm. uh, and vocal hooks mm. because it's such an important part if if your track misses uh like a cool vocal hook or mm. a hook in general then it's not memorable then people won't won't uh, remember it I, every time I've I've, I've get tracks from someone where they're either coming for our course or they're just they're just I, you meet them and just start going and they send you new music, especially from a tech class point of view, that I've done, and they go, oh, I've done Creativity Unlocked. And you're just like, I already, in my brain, I think these are going to be better tracks because of that course, like that course, because of that course. Yeah. And every time they're better tracks. So yes, it must be good. Yeah, it is. It is really good. It, I mean, especially f- to find that, yeah, th- that memorable parts, mm. it, it helps a lot to, yeah, to, to, to build that cool and that's so then and then being part of that art like their aftercare is pretty good as well like from a le- it levels you up as well i feel yeah. like they're after everything after you finish the course is quite yeah. good yeah 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 it, it went quite well i mean i had the the first release on wildcard came out after my um after my uh, production certificate no way cool. and before i went on the creativity unlock course so um yeah that even accelerated my 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 uh yeah my ideas I, uh, my 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 production mm. and uh, the ideas i put into it and i think w- what happened after the course is that my my records got better and better and better like mm. every record i make i feel oh it's even better than the the one <laughs> i made before yeah so it's it's crazy how how you can progress yeah. yeah, that's cool. I, I, yeah. And uh, Skeleton Key says, what was Alex's first house music event he went to? My first house music event I went to? Oof, that's a very good question. I don't think I can remember. I've been in a couple of clubs and in Darmstadt back in the days. Mm. That's close to Frankfurt and mm. I, I was living in a city actually between Frankfurt and Darmstadt mm. and there were kind of clubs that I that I went to and I think they had they had like different rooms and also there was mostly a room where they played like house music stuff mm. and uh, yeah that, that was kind of my first experience in a, in a club but I mean when I started that that that, that kind of music I was too young to go to clubs <laughs> <laughs> they will let me in <laughs> <laughs> nice uh, what? Who was your first house music session? Oh, there have been different artists that have inspired me a lot. I think, I think in in two thousand eleven, mm. I've bought uh, the a compilation, the two room, two room Miami. I think it was the two room Miami compilation where I bought like really bought the whole compilation. Yeah, because I thought it was so good. Yeah, and there. There are a lot of tracks on that compilation that still inspire my sound because there's there's some really cool stuff on there. If you if you want, you can check it out on. Uh, on with that, I, was that? I guess that was a that'd have been a tour room nights as well, wouldn't it? Tour room nights yeah, Miami. Yeah, yeah. Tour room nights Miami Eleven. I remember because we used to do from a data transmission point of view. We work because we work with tour room since since I started DT, and we used to do all the kind of when they were announcing those compilations. It was actually. There's um George who works for Torum. He was always on compilations. Uh, he's now stepped up the. He's uh, he's higher up the company now. But he was always compilations and always be marketing marketing. And I literally would work with George. And he wrote, I've got another compilation coming out. Yeah. And we used to get all the compilations and do com- competitions. And so I remember, I, like I went we, through that, those years. We were literally always about compilations and working. Yeah. With, that's how we worked with Torum. So I remember some of them. They're quite cool. I think I think one of them uh, of the main influences then, or my main my main obsession would be. Probably Mark Knight because a lot of a lot of stuff I do comes kind of from that direction, but also like the all the all the older um, two room artists, pretty much in that area, like people you find on those old compilations, on those old two room compilations. That's what, yeah, what really obsessed me with with that kind of music where I thought, wow, this this sounds really really good. 
<laughs> and back then there was still this electro house thing going on. Yes, it was. It, I love that sound. Yeah, I did that actually. That was my like my first gigs as a DJ. They were not house music. It was electro house. Like, right, cool. We like not the not the EDM kind of stuff. It was even more dirty. Like, the fed, the, like, the, almost, fed, the fiddly the grand and all those sort of sounds. And, yeah, like and, yeah, like yeah. a little bit of punk rock in a electronic music kind of way. Yeah, stuff. Dave Spoon, yes, that's yeah. there. All those, all those are like funk. It would have been Funk Agenda and Dave yeah. Spoon and Freddie Legrand and Flip. Yeah, all those sort of names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like the electro? You going electro? Like the? You, are you talking the kind of Justice electro? Is that the, yeah? You're talking those kind of guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that music. Digitalism, yeah. Justice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That stuff we played with my brother. Actually, we had a we had a trio going on back then, um, and we we're playing uh, parties. Uh, in 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 Germany, in like small clubs, mm. trying to to uh, <laughs> to to get people, yeah. And it was a it was a yeah like a like a dirty very dirty sound. Yeah, I remember those. I was DJing around then, and I was playing the similar records. I love those records, like Justice, Digitalism, yeah. Cajun. What's it? Cajun Dance Club, and yeah, all those records. Yeah, 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 definitely. I think it was it was it was hard to start the the night because we did all night gigs. Yeah. Because we were a trio, we could play like mm. we the only acts. Uh, yeah, boys noise. Yeah, that's boys it. Noise, boys noise, definitely boys noise. All um, of the Ed Banger stuff with Uffi and, yeah. and and yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, I, Sebastian I and yeah, I loved all that sort of stuff. Yeah, um, but also sometimes a little bit of that. Um, Axwell stuff yeah. would come in. Yeah. Like everything that was like very very edgy. And, <clears throat> yeah, and but but in the in the warm up back then in the warm up you couldn't play that kind of music because people would be like, What the fuck is going on? <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And so I started uh, doing warm ups with house and tech house music. Yeah. That's makes sense. what that and that's what, what how I got to those uh, two room compilations actually. Because yeah, because th those tracks worked very well before, like a, a harder kind of set. yeah, yeah. I think I did the same because I again I was doing warm ups around the same time, and I think you're right. It was you couldn't play all those records because they were like yeah, they were also a nightmare to mix those records yeah, because yeah, they yeah. always had like fifteen twenty second intros, yeah. and you end up I ended up having to loop the intro because it just wasn't long enough, yeah. or you just doing really really fast mixes, yes. which is which is always fun. Yes. Um, we played on Tractor back then, like Tractor, DJ. Tractor DJ. Yeah. Uh, so we could uh, make make the loops and stuff. Yeah. We also had synthesizers on the stage, and I was I was actually <laughs> playing the electronic guitar because it fitted so well, and we had uh, like two or three tracks where where we did that, like playing the electronic guitar with this kind of sound. Yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. I wonder if we have photos of it somewhere. <laughs> who, who, who wants to see photos? One's in the chat. Want to see photos? Uh, yeah, Tech House was definitely more minimal then. You're right. Um, Dirty South. Yeah, Dirty South. Um, and what's his name? South Central. That's now um, Thingy from Who? You know the guy. You know. You remember the band South Central? No. They were like electro. Um, one of the guys from South Central is now part of the band or part of the group. Who? With a zero. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, people evolved. Yeah. I mean, you need to check out what Alex Preston did back then. He's been in a really different kind of music. Really? I, I have old Alex Preston records on my on my computer that are very dirty. No way. Yeah, I wonder if it's the same Alex Preston, but I think so. <laughs> oh, there you go. Maybe. <laughs> right, should we play a track? So the first track you had out was uh, Turn the Lights Up on Wild Cards. Uh, it actually was the second track. Uh, oh, was it? I ha I had a like my first my first release with under the new artist name came out on a really small record label in Freiburg. Yeah. Called Heimatliebe. This oh one. yeah, yeah. We well, can mean, play one of those if you want. Yeah, if you like, you can. can we play Thunder play Island. It? Yeah. Tell me about Thunder Island then. Thunder. Island. Where did that name from? That's cool. Uh, Thunder Island. Dun, dun, dun. It was just some kind of idea. I don't know that I had in my head. I actually produced this track before I went to the Tomb Academy. So no way. So we can we may be able to hear the difference of of like the difference off before and after the Tomb yeah, Academy. You will probably hear a difference. It. I just came to my head and it was it was 
produced in the pandemic. Really? I had a lot of time to spend because I I didn't have to work anymore. Oh nice. <laughs> like with the with the with the lockdown, I was pretty much like, okay, I had to stay at home and didn't have anything yeah. to do all the day. Like I did I did sports every day and then I was like, okay, what's next? Let's make music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I sat down and produced a lot of music in that time. Okay, let's play this. So there we go. That was Thunder Island. <laughs> it's crazy to hear this tune today because when I hear it now, I think it misses a lot of things. Yeah. And it's from 2021. That's that was the release date. Yeah. So I mean, it's only two two years ago, and probably not even two years ago. And now I really I I would I would add a lot of stuff in there. To be honest. <laughs> little ear candy's missing and just other stuff. Yeah, like a lot. It needs a lot more uh, automations, ear candies. Mm. There's a lot of potential in there. Has your process has changed since since you since making that track? My process, I, I'm, I think I push myself harder in finding, finding stuff like this. Mm. Trying to okay, this sounds okay. It's a good, it's a good start. But how can I make it even better? Mm. Like how can I get one more percent? on the synth how can i get one more percent on the drums how can i get no, no. like ear candies in there how can i make make it interesting because the break you might have noticed that the break is still it's not not happening enough mm. there's a lot of space in there that could be filled with cool stuff <laughs> if, if i would A&R myself from a nowadays perspective i would say it's a it's a cool idea i still like the idea mm. and everything around it but uh it needs to be yeah, it could be better to if I if I added a lot of more stuff like yeah, ear candies and automations. And if it's missing things, would would you consider remixing it now and doing a new version? Maybe. <laughs> That's cool. Maybe I would. I would. Yeah, I might do a remix at one point. And then and then after that one, then then we did the Tourm Academy production certificate, and then we did turn the lights up. Yes, turn the lights up is uh, <coughs> my first proper release, like after the after the production certificate. Yeah. yeah. What did you change loads from making the, that track to this? To the yeah, because I had a I had a, um, an idea on what I wanted to do. Yeah. Because I like Thunder Island was there was no plan behind Thunder Island. It just <laughs> came together somehow. It was like it was just an accident, basically. <laughs> and um, it sounds like a cool story for a book. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but uh yeah and that, Thund- Thunder Island was just an accident. Yeah, it just came together <laughs> by accident. The, the people don't want to live there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, true. <laughs> now I'm thinking I don't know who of you watches the Mandalorian. Now yeah. I'm thinking of that abandoned planet where the Mandalorians came yeah, from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Mandalore. Yeah, Mandalore, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thunder oh, Island, <laughs> the reconquer. How do you say it in English? They're trying to reconquer Thunder Island now. Yeah, no, I don't want to spoil it. If, if you guys haven't seen the Mandalorian yet, then the the new um the new episodes you should definitely yeah. There's new it. ones today as well. It's really good. Okay, and then so turn the lights up. We've come out on wild card. Let's play that then. Let's have a listen to this.
There we go. So that's turn the lights up. Right. So that was your first. That was the first track after the after the tour in Academy. Yeah, that was. I think that was the first release where I felt like proper. Where I really put all all the other stuff from the course inside. Yeah. Like really, all my knowledge that I had from the production certificate, uh, and the process just went much more streamlined. Yeah. Like. I knew what I wanted to make. It was not an accident. <laughs> it was just like, okay, I want to make this kind of music. Um, and so it, there was a plan behind it. Yeah. And that's, that's a, that's a big takeaway from the courses, to be honest, to, to have a plan when you go to the studio to yeah. not go there and be like, okay, let's make accidents happen. Sometimes accidents happen, but yeah, you want to go there with a, like a, a plan. What, What's what? What should come out at the end? Yeah. Do you want to make a tech house track, or do you want to make a kind of the other thing is almost melodic, melodic house. I think it's in, in Beatport has it under deep house. It's not even the, fir the first. Yeah, 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 No way. It's more like melodic house, probably. But yeah. And then you joined us on my course yes. in May last year. Do you remember what your motivation for joining us was? Yes, because um, it's really good if you are. Uh, if you are a mad producer, I, I won't say that I'm a mad producer, but I know my craft, mm. but then it's, that's not it. If you want to like have your music out there and um, be visible, you have to get some ideas on how to, to promote your music um, on how to, to get it to the record labels properly, mm. to get it to the right people. And um, as well, how to, how to yeah how to build an audience like how to how to, how do I present myself on social media I used to post just very like <laughs> no content I didn't I didn't really post a lot on Instagram mm. and then I think that that was my that was the starting point for me where I was like okay now I kind of know how to how to make music and yeah. I'm happy with my music now so now what what comes next how do I how do I get my music out there, like, and be and make it visible? Mm. Because it's cool to have music out there. You can self-release your music, but if you don't promote anything, then it's it's just there. You won't you won't have an audience. Nobody will listen to it. Mm. So that that was my that was the thing. And then I I had a call with you. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think straight away it was. I thought yeah, it it, it will it will help me totally mm. to to. To get to my goal faster without doing stupid mistakes, because I mean that's that's another thing. You can you can be self-taught. You can learn a lot of stuff yourself. But then I don't. I didn't want to waste too much time. Uh, so it was for me. It was logical to to go on a course. And because I had uh, very good, um, uh, I had I had those two room academy courses. I knew that the, those courses they 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 really help. Mm. It's not just something that is out there and that they want to 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 um yeah to make money from you that you get a lot of stuff out from courses from mm. getting education so for me it was logical to get educated in, in that part of the music industry as well and yeah and that's that's why i joined the course in the end because i wanted to to get the knowledge Mm. everything that's not connected with the music production but everything else mm. pretty much what's the biggest things you've been implementing since the since course i think what i've been implementing is trying to 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 make more content actually yep. so i if you if you watch my instagram i i don't post like super super much but i try to every week i try to think about one cool piece of content yeah and um yeah and i've that's what what I took away from the course a lot. Like ideas, what what I can do, mm. actually, basically. Um, what did I implement? Like I, I started advertising a playlist. Yes, how's that going? It's it's going really really good. Nice. Uh, it's I mean it's, I've I've got a lot of uh, followers on my playlist now. It's grown up from practically zero to six hundred something. Nice. In in two or three months now. Nice. So that's something I like every everyone that is into curating a playlist and mm. and wants to build an audience on Spotify try to try to advertise it. Mm. And um yeah, that works quite well. I'm still tweaking and trying to find out the cool you, tricks you, you to do, you do, yeah. you, to make it a little bit cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'm working on it. It's cool and it's it's also fun to get into that. 
somehow. Yeah. yeah, I love it. I love doing that, and I, I'm I'm pleased. I'm so pleased it's working for you because I I again we do our grow ours exactly obviously exactly the same way, and it, running ads to gross playlists definitely helps. Yes. And then after after obviously you joined the course, and then you had a you had your first remix out. Yes, and that was uh, again um, on the on the label uh, in Freiburg, like the, the Heimatliebe Records, mm. and um, they asked me to do a remix of a track they they wanted to sign. Mm. So yeah, I was. I think remixing is fun. So <laughs> I was like, okay, let's do it. Let's just try. <laughs> yeah, if I can get a cool remix together. Skellinki says, was there a big jump in a, on a particular promotion? I I think yeah. Well, the the Spotify playlist obviously, mm. but. Um, yeah, I think they, all the other support I'm getting from from data transmission basically and from from yourself is uh, is absolutely amazing. If you watch on my Spotify streams, uh, not the Spotify streams on the the SoundCloud streams, mm. you can you can see the difference. Oh, really? The tracks that have been uploaded by data transmission, they are doing really really well. Yeah, I was just looking when we were looking at the playlist there, like like one of the tracks has. Nearly ten thousand plays. I was like, "Whoa, that's cool." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and because you're still got, what, you've got quite a still like your your following is growing, which is cool. The goddess says, "Hey, Alex. Um, <laughs> hey, doing? Welcome in. How you doing? Hey. Right. So let's listen to this remix. So this is uh, how do we say this word? Uh, Einklang. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's an artist. It's an artist from the Black Forest. Yeah. Uh, called uh, his mm. name is Einklang. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I made a remix of his track Save You. Yeah, let's play this then. Oh, that's really? cool <laughs> thank you thank you so much i like that it passed the kick test as well we can have a we can have a okay pass the kick test i quite like the kick thank you <laughs> so how did that tell us about remixing did you enjoy doing it yeah the good the good thing about that remix was that it already had a hook mm. because it, that that's hard it's hard to find a hook yeah i personally find it really hard to find like a really good hook Mm. So I had this. The vocal has has already been there. Mm. I just got it from the artist. Yeah. And um, I built everything around the vocal. So I, I had I just took the vocal from the original. Mm. And I think this um uh this melody here this ding 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 ding. ding. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's um <laughs> I think I also took it from from the original, but re replayed it. Yeah. It's just the sample that I played in different notes mm. so there's a new melody coming in that's cool so that was kind of the idea behind the remix i like how you're kind of mixing up your releases between big labels and then this and the circle label yeah it's but it's i mean it, there's a large there, there's a there's a huge um yeah a huge range of labels uh, yeah actually because heimat label records it's a very small label from my hometown yeah they make different kind of styles mm. um but also, they helped me a lot to um, to build my um, yeah to build my career in in Freiburg because yeah. they got me in touch with the promoters mm. and uh, through this label I am uh, I am in the great position to have regular gigs in Freiburg now. Nice. So it's I, so I'm very thankful and that's why I still keep the connection going. Yeah, I'm at Liebe. Makes sense. It's a good strategy. Yeah, really good Absolutely. strategy. Then you've got big releases that will build, build career and, and local releases that are building local career, which is perfect. Yes. And they support my music and everything I do as well. This is yeah. really cool. It is. It is. It's it, really nice, guys, to be honest. If you're if somebody else from Freiburg is watching, um, I can really recommend Heimat Liebe. Check also, also, you can check the other releases. They're doing like different kinds of uh, electronic music. Really That's cool. cool stuff on there. 
Um, someone said, oh, uh, Skeleton Key says, who masters your stuff? <laughs> okay, to be honest, um, Turn the Lights Up has been mastered by myself. Nice. I just did everything myself on that track, and I, I asked um, Sam, like the 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 A and R of Wildcard, shall we get it mastered? He was like, no, it's fine. <laughs> okay, there okay. you go. Um, this track has been mastered by myself as well. Yeah. Save you. That's cool. Uh, it sounds great. Thanks. <laughs> sounds great. Thank you. I I know that we've not. It's not been asked yet in the chat, but I thought I'd get your top five plugins. Yes, I need to look that up. Okay, <laughs> I need to look that up because I took a little bit of notes before. Okay, my top five plugins. I'm using a lot of plugins. Yeah. But my number one plugin, I would say, like my essential, my essential plugin for everything I do is uh, Ableton Auto Filter. <laughs> oh, really? It's the Ableton Auto Filter, and I mostly switch it to MS2 mode. And a lot of my sound design stuff r goes through uh, Ableton Auto Filter because it just, yeah, it just sounds good. I try to, <laughs> I try to cut everything out that I don't need from the sound, and I give it a little bit of edge with the drive button. Mm. So Ableton Auto Filter is my number one plugin that you will find on. Is that just part of Ableton? It's just right, part cool, of Ableton. amazing. It's free. Ableton actually has really good plugins built in. If you know how to use them, mm. then you're almost there. You don't need like a lot of crazy fancy plugins and spend thousands of euros or or pounds or dollars on. <laughs> Plugins. That's cool. Uh, yeah. MXL says that that or able and saturator for me. Yeah, Ableton saturator is really good as well. I only don't like the look of too much of the Ableton stuff. So I, I think a lot of plugins for a lot of plugins, it's more about the user interface because it ju just looks a little bit nicer to have to look at something else, not only the gray uh, Ableton mm. stuff. You want to know my number two, maybe? <laughs> yeah, good guy. Number two. Number two is. Um, the sound toys decapitator. Yep. Another plugin that gives a lot of edge to sounds. You can find it on almost all of my uh, channels. To be honest, it's it's just really good. You can I I, I saturate all of my sounds, mm. and that's something I learned at the Two Room Academy to saturate stuff like a lot. So you it really punches you in your face. Uh, mm. Stuff gets so much better when it's saturated. That's cool. Yeah. And then I Three. thought i go a little bit into the, my sound design. I love sound design. So my third one is Massive X by Native Instruments. Mm -hmm. It's super versatile and uh, great to experiment with it. It's, it's endless. Possibilities are endless with the synthesizer. It's crazy. That's cool. Number four. Number four is uh, a classic. Uh, it's Diva. It comes, just comes up a lot in this in, in these in these polls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I, I recently got it, and I I really like uh, like it because it just sounds very analog. Yeah. And I I I own a, a Moog Sub Thirty Seven at home. Yeah. Which I barely use to be honest <laughs> because the plugins they are doing the same job. The only cool thing about this. The actual synthesizers that you can twist knobs. Yes, <laughs> that's that's it. So I, I actually thought about selling the the synthesizer at one point because I live in a very small apartment. And then number five. <laughs> number five uh, is uh, another plugin that I recently bought. It's Sooth Two, mm -hmm. um, to tame all of the harshness that I am uh, creating with all the saturation. Yeah, Sooth 2 goes on a lot of tracks for me, and on a, yeah, because it's yeah, it's it's t just taming the harshness, and in the end gives you a clearer signal. Mm. It's kind of a mixing tool for me, and yeah, it's it's really good. I if if you if you want to go into that, try it out. It's I think there's a a trial out there, and I, they might have a deal at the moment going on. That's cool. Some questions in the chat. Kara FX asks, can you talk a little bit about your planning your production studio sessions and setting setting your goals for it? Uh, I, I'm i not the most organized person when it comes to that, I, I must say. I mean, I know what I want to make mm. a, about. So mostly I will... I, I, I might start with a reference track. In the last in the last months, I I actually uh, yeah I, I knew what I wanted to make like 
I'm I'm always into that kind of percussive, energetic tech house thing. So mm. I'm pretty much starting mostly starting to build drums and a groove and try to make everything like very very hooky mm. at at this pl at this place do already. You the, do you want the hook? Yeah, <laughs> there comes the hook. <laughs> <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> <laughs> so you make it hooky? Yeah. I, <laughs> yes. If if you guys need a need a hook, I think we've got one spare here. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I'll um yeah make everything hooky, <laughs> and um. That that's kind of my plan, and then I uh, try to find like a really a really good vocal hook, synth hook. Mm. So yeah, to to ask that question, I'm my plan is to to make this to continue the sound that I that I I am doing right now that you can hear on my last releases, and mm. to build that further. Mm. So that's mostly the plan, and there's like the master plan is like to make it. Good music. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. But, um, but it can't, it doesn't come together by accident. So I, I'm much more focused on what I want to make nowadays. Mm. Yeah. That, then you had your release on Shapeshift. Yes. Should we play that one? Yes, let's do it. Right. So Leslie, so this is you. This is called Been There on Shapeshifter, Shapeshift Records. Tell us about this one. Yeah. It's it's all started with a synthesizer I had, I mm. think. I've, I've been playing, um, I had a, uh, a Nordlead four mm. uh, that I uh, that I sold a couple of months ago, mm. and um, I yeah I had this ravey step thing going on 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 that, and I thought it would be cool to build a track around it. Mm. That's how it came together. I find cool ball girls uh, on actually it's on Splice. Mm. You, you can probably find it if you search a little. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but it's been a little tweaked. Also, it's not the original one. I've I've been. Mm. trying to make it my own yeah and that's how it came together and shapeshift was uh was really nice to work with to be honest mm. great guys uh i sent it over there and they wanted to sign it that's cool and uh there it is let's play it We go. That's a banger. Should we get the rave on? <laughs> that was a banger. That was yeah. great, mate. I was, we and we premiered that. And that was it's it's done, yes. it's done really well. It's done really well. Like thanks for premiering uh, again. Yeah. That that trick track did really well. It's I think it's still my my Spotify number one. Is it? I, I think like from the play uh, from the play numbers. Yes. Nice. That's cool. Yeah. Right. So that so that was that was shapeshift, and then something happened. Yes. Um. I mean, this. I, I really must say that this shapeshift record did really well. I got supported by Mark Knight. Yep. Um. On on Two Room Radio, that was my first record that went onto Two Room Radio. Yep. And that that was like such a big achievement to me. And um. Yes. I almost fell off my chair <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I heard that. Um, that they are going to play it. So yeah, it's it's crazy. Crazy times. It's it's crazy to see this whole journey like in front of myself today. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I bet it's I bet it's nice going through kind of that walk through like the last few years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not that long time ago, actually. Yeah. Cause that was last year. Yeah. 
Yeah, twenty. Because we're looking at the, the the upload for this. This was eleven months ago, and yes. then and then Shapeshift was six months ago. So like yes. the end of last year. Yes, it was. I think in September, October. And then you start making more music. Uh, yeah, of of course. <laughs> I've been I've been uh, making a lot of more music uh, in the meantime. Yeah. Before before been there has been signed. I've been working on more or more stuff. You always need to to make sure you have follow up uh, on the back end. So if they ask you for music, you can be like, "Of course, I have another demo for you." <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I mean it's it's essential because people, if if you are doing really well, people will will uh, that that's what happened with me. People started to approach me. Mm. That was the point, the shapeshift release, when people started to approach me for demos. Mm. It's it's kind of sorry i felt like something is happening like people start to be interested in what i'm doing and they uh some people reach out to me like hey i'm having a record label if you have a demo send it over oh that's nice so like yeah. a good confidence boost as well though yeah yeah, yeah. so that that was yeah at this place i was i felt that there was that i was on the right way mm. that was just on the right way and um yeah and then um, you made a record and dropped it into the demo stream. Yes, yes, I was on your demo stream. He was on my demo stream. Amazing. <laughs> I was on your demo stream. I um, handed in a record um, because I thought it was it was cool to to hear like what others thought of it. Mm. And that was uh, Kisoy. Yep. Yeah, I think you 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 liked it. <laughs> I, well, we've got you've actually got a clip. I, I'm going to actually show the clip. Like so, basically, you were on the demo stream, and then. You do exactly what a lot, a lot of people are doing now. They get a demo listened to and they make a clip, which is superb. You should definitely do that. And then you put it on Instagram. Yes. <laughs> Let's play the clip. Um, this is going to boom out of the speakers. Let me just click in there. Holy crap. Holy moly, that was amazing. Like, it is so on point. Like, holy moly. Yeah. I mean, I was at Tour Room the other weekend, and I can imagine quite a lot of the DJs there playing that. Yeah. yeah. It sounded great. It sounded great. Like, really well. Matt Knight would hammer the absolute yeah. verbal all of it. I think Tour Room will kill yeah, yeah, it, it is a weapon. It is a weapon. But then what I'll this is. Playing one all day. That is such a big tune. Okay. Okay. I'll put it on my end and we'll see what happens. Okay. Okay. I think so too. I think it's a big tune. It is a big tune. It is a big tune. Well done, Alex. Festival like, DJs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that went on uh, Insta, and you obviously we tagged Tickball, tagged Torum and Kitball um, as saying that we could, we said it. Junior Sanchez replied saying, Can you send him some demos? Which is really cool. But then what happened then? Uh, what happened then? Uh, I actually sent that demo out to Kitball. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes. And um, yeah, I. Um, and I got a reply. <laughs> yeah. It, it took a little bit of time, to be honest. I, um, that's one of my advices. Mm. Be patient. <laughs> Just be patient. But yeah, um, I got the response that, uh, yeah, that they liked it. Like mm. the, the kidball team, uh, Juju Tsikora, who, who runs the label pretty much. Mm. Um, and she was asking me if I had a second track as a B-side. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> do, do they really want to do a, like an EP? out of nowhere mm. because normally I thought that hey, it might go on a compilation and then at some point etc etc and then she was like do you have a b-side I was like hmm, yeah <laughs> <laughs> did you have a b-side I had a b-side did you I had a b-side yeah it was <laughs> passion it's, it has been there yet and I was yeah. like hmm it might be a little bit too hard maybe like too tough for, for the kid ball sound yeah but then I I sent it over to, to them and they practically immediately responds yeah it's fine let's let's do it <laughs> did you send it with the video as well i think so yeah i think i nice. think i sent the link with the video in as well i'm not sure i i need to check my my did, did he did uh, and tv radio says did you, did Alex get any advice from us on the stream that he applied <laughs> nice yeah i mean I, I mean it gave me confidence to to send it over there mm. because it's when others it's it's always hard to judge your own music. I'm mm. I'm really bad with that. I'm 
uh, I always think, oh, it's not not cool enough. Maybe it's too hard. Hard. Maybe it's too soft. I don't know. Mm. Maybe it's, not, it's just not good enough. And it's really cool to hear others what others think about your music because they can see it from a, from a neutral perspective. Mm. You know, I've I've been working on these tracks for months and I have heard them so many times that I don't even know if they are good or not. Mm. So yeah. It, that's that's something I, I took uh, along from the stream for sure. That's cool. That's really cool. And then they so basically signed the EP. Yes. Then they signed the EP straight away. Amazing. And they they were amazing to work with. I must say they um, such a such a great team. Mm. And if they, I mean I don't know who of you knows Kidball. They are based in Dortmund, also in in, in Germany. Mm. So that was. Uh, yeah, that was something really cool, and uh, to to be connected with them, mm. um, being in the same country, and um, also uh, to to build that connection. Because I've been I've I've been a fan of of the Kidball music for a long time. I, we didn't talk about that yet, but or before, but before I went from tech house to uh, from electro house to tech house, there has been a lot of deep house mm. uh, for me in between. Like I I've been playing a lot of deep house. When I was a resident DJ in a, in a club in Germany, I couldn't play tech house from the beginning on. I was playing a lot of deep house, mm. so I also bought a lot of Kidball records. They used to be in the deep house sphere. Oh no way! Yeah, like what what people call deep house. It's not the same deep house. Yeah, like deep house said uh, that. that, that was this around the 2010, 2011, yeah, 2012, yeah, yeah. that period? It was very poppy. The like, hot creations kind of kicking off a of deep house and that sort of yeah. kit ball was in there. Yeah yeah, 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 okay. With a lot of vocals and... Yeah. Yeah, so I, I was into their music for a long time yet and I've always um, kept up with their with their releases. Mm. Yeah, and yeah, so and, and Tube and Burger, the ones that founded the label, they uh, were also some some uh, big inspiration of mine. I've been on a club night with them like many years ago, uh, with Tube and Burger playing, and mm. I think they brought along Paco. Nice. And that was so good that I had the night of my life with them. So, mm. yeah, and anyway, so it was a, a huge uh, huge opportunity for me to release on Kidball Records. Mm. That's cool. That's really cool. Uh, let's play this record then. Case Case Soy. Let's play play it. Go! That still sounds amazing. That sounds amazing. What a big record. Let's get it ready. Hulk! Smash! Big tune. Great work on the vocal. Some uh, skeleton key says, great balance with all the effects. Thanks. Congrats, Thank dude. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's a great track. Give him the triple. The ripple. Give him the ripple. Give him the triple. Okay. Pass the kick test. I quite like the kick. Thank you. <laughs> Um, how do you do? How do you spend your downtime when you're not making music or being part of music or working or what do you like to? I, did I? Have I seen on on your Instagram wetsuits and <laughs> yeah? And how, what are we doing in our downtime to enjoy ourselves as hobbies? Yeah, I um I have I have the problem that I have a lot of interests, so my days can get quite busy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do CrossFit, um, especially in winter time. Mm. So um, yeah, just to 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 stay fit and also it's fun for me. I I. I'm I'm the person that has a little bit too much energy sometimes, and then I have to find find a place to to do something. <laughs> yeah, just to to use heavy weights. Yeah, CrossFit is one of those things. And then talking about the wetsuits, I love surfing. 
Um, I just came back from Portugal. I've been I've been there for two weeks. Nice. And um, yeah, I just I just like surfing, um, water sports in general. I also go wakeboarding nice. in the summertime. Yeah, and also it also gets the head like free. Mm. What I also like is mountain biking. Cool. It's really cool to be out in the nature and just do something else and not thinking about this whole music thing. Because what I what I discovered is that sometimes ideas they just pop up. When you when you don't force them, mm. yeah, I love that. When I go out for a run, I'll yeah. I'll, I'll come back and have about four ideas of stuff I need to do. Yeah, totally. And then when you're sitting in front of your computer and trying to, I need an idea now. It's not happening. <laughs> Are you? Are, there's. Am I right in thinking there's two types of mountain bikers? There's there's a downhill and then there's a the kind of cross. Cross land is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one are you? Yeah. Do both or one or the other? I um, I am I'm the the downhill kind of guy. The ah, the the hardcore <laughs> yeah. down guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a little bit dangerous sometimes, but um, yeah, but it's fun. It's so much fun. Um, my friend does that. He's he he builds ramps in the in the South Island of New Zealand. <laughs> that's wicked. And um, he like he, he when he was over here, he like his body is a, is a wreck from like yeah. falling and crashing and and there's pins and there's the plates oh. and there's because it's it's hardcore the downhill. Yeah, but I mean you can you can ex, ex, you can choose your yeah your level where oh. how, how you want <laughs> yeah. to go. I'm. I'm more the kind of guy. I also enjoy driving uphill, by the way. Right, okay. Because we don't in in Freiburg we have like nice mountain bike mm. um, trails, but we have to to also ride up the hill. Yeah. So it's also like a very sportive workout. Imagine driving uh, up like a nine hundred meter hill. Um, Fuck. It's yeah you, it, it it's a proper workout yeah yeah and then i also enjoy driving down but i don't go like super fast and with crazy jumps and stuff because i'm i'm actually a little bit scared of injuries <laughs> yeah that dude yeah. that dude he's covered in a man i'm very worried yeah um okay and then we have got uh, a current record out called my boo yes tell me about this one because you work with somebody on this one that is collaboration is that the first time you collaborated it is um Actually not. Actually, this this has been my second collaboration. Mm. Uh, my boo. Um, um, I, I did it with Aker together. He's an, uh, another alumni from the Tulum Academy. Yeah. Um, and he approached me. I don't know last year at some point, and asked me if I wanted to do a collab, and I thought it was a cool idea. He had a he actually had a cool release on uh, Leaders of the New School, like on the yeah, yeah. compilation that comes out on Tulum Tracks. So I said yes, let's do it. And then we he's he's based in Istanbul, Turkey. So we couldn't physically meet. Yeah. Uh so we did it all over over Zoom. How was that? Which was interesting. Really interesting um to work on Zoom. But it turned out quite well because he could watch my my screen doing mm. me me doing stuff and also the other way around. Like each week we would meet on the on the same day mm. and continue working. It was quite, um, yeah, straightforward um, and, and planned. That's cool. Very cool. And uh, so, so in the end, we had this track coming together. And yeah, and then we signed it to Hot Fuss. They they were interested. And um, it's also another cool level with a lot of cool tunes. Yeah. Another uh, level. Yeah. And so we were buzzing and we could get it out on Hot Fuss. Let's play this one then.
great. You can you can massively see like a difference in sound from where we started the stream all the way through as as the progression's getting better and better and better of your records. Do you, have you noticed that listening to them all in a row? Yeah, thank thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Totally, totally. I can I can see I can see it myself like how my music has evolved and how my production got better and better with every track i i I could finish yeah it's really it's been really great it's been really a joy to watch the your literally your development over the last two hours it's been mad um <laughs> but it's, you know, it's been fun i've enjoyed it thank you okay now we've got our next tune coming up what tell right so this next tune you've signed on to tour room tracks yes Congratulations! Thank you so much. <laughs> that must be like that when that happened. You must like you literally been tour room for a long time, yes. and and you must have been buzzing. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, obviously, I've been, I've I've been talking about that compilation in two thousand eleven. Yeah. That I bought from tour room, and since then I've been into their releases and check continuously uh, what what they were releasing and all that stuff. Mm. So um, yeah, in the end um. We got signed to Two Room. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's really crazy, really crazy. And with uh, with with that kind of crew, um, it's uh, absolutely been amazing uh, to to achieve that as a team. Like, it's 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 been a teamwork. So this track, there's five of you. Yeah. There's five guys. Yes. Uh, myself. Uh, we had a a Tire. Yep. Um, Kefi. Yep. Uh, Loss. Seca in Los the house. Seca, yeah. <laughs> in the and house. And uh, Hart. Yep. From over the road there. Yes. Yes. Tony Hart. How did this happen? How did the record happen? Tell me about it. Um, we were, last last year, Two Room made a little conference uh, in London yep. at E1. Yeah, this time so, last year. Yeah, it was, I think, the Easter weekend. Yeah, because I, yeah, I literally come up on my feed like the last couple of days. Yeah. It was uh, my First time in the UK, actually. Oh no way! <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, cool. So yeah, we had this. Um, we had this. Um, we all joined this. Um, this uh, uh, music uh, conference. Conference. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> uh, this conference, and um, yeah, to I met I met Tony, and he introduced me to the other guys, and we just hung out uh, on that day, and had a couple of beers later on, and yeah. It was just a fun day, so that's how how, how I met those guys um, in the first place, mm. and then uh, the the journey kind of continued because we kept the contact, and then um, we met uh, last year. Um, there was a two room event happening last year mm. uh, at three three eight. I think it was in November. Yeah. Um and um, yeah, we all wanted to go to that party, and I was like, "Yeah, let's go. I want to come over." again and go to a two room party <laughs> and um we had the idea um that it would be cool to to yeah to just make a couple of actually we wanted to to split that group up and make a collapse yeah in our group like maybe two or th three tracks with different artists like maybe two or three artists working on one track but in the end we ended up um Making uh making one big collab with five people, nice. Which was cool because each of us put his uh, creativity into that. So there's something that comes from from different, yeah, from different directions into that record, and that's probably what makes it so great because, like, like the it's 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 like the best things of all of us is coming together in it. Actually, we we chucked in parts from from all of us in there it was so it was a lot of fun to write that record oh Kefi's just joined us now hey Kefi welcome in dude um and then it got signed and it got signed tell, but, tell me about tell me about when you found out you'd it been signed like tell me emotions <laughs> like tell me like you must have gone did you go nuts tell me about that yeah it was um I was in Germany the other the, actually the other guys they were at the two room HQ uh when it got, oh. when they found out it got signed um, I was in Germany and I got a call, <laughs> a video call from, from Tony. And uh, I was like, uh, yeah, what's going on? And then uh, he was like, yeah, um, we just got signed to Two Room with, with that drag. I was like, what? <laughs> Crazy. I, can, I couldn't really believe it. But on the other side, I actually thought, yeah, I mean, if there, yeah, this track was just really good. So I, I kind of expected that stuff like this could 
potentially happen. Yeah. So I wasn't like super surprised, but still I was buzzing that it was uh, that it, that it happened for all of us. And then yesterday you went to tour room to do promo yes. stuff. How was that? Yes, it was so much fun. Like to to meet everyone and um, the whole tour room team is so amazing. <laughs> Honestly, they're just all so so nice and yeah, we had a fun afternoon at the tour room HQ. We've been recording a uh, little back to back to back to back to back, like with five people. Oh my god! <laughs> running around the decks all the time. Oh my that, god! That was um, that was big fun. I think there will be a video um, out uh, at some at some point. Uh, you really need to check that out. That's cool. Okay, so we're not allowed to play this because apparently it's under some embargoes. Yes, but. <laughs> Estaremos bailando con la noche, con el abandono salvaje esta noche. Es la noche que no olvidaremos. Estaremos bailando con la pasión y libres. Estaremos bailando, dale fuerte y no pares. Porque para nosotros esta noche es la noche. Y rave hasta que salga el sol, que no olvidaremos. Sube la música. Sube la música, 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 cuerpo siente el sonido. Okay, that's all I can play ya. Yeah. <laughs> Let's give that the right one. Yeah, that was great, mate. Thank you. So uh, and Loz is dropping the link so you can go and grab the pre-order and support these five guys um, and go and help them out. When's it out? Uh, it's coming uh, the 28th. I need to look so that next, up. <laughs> so next Friday, a week on Friday, basically. Yes. Nice. Wicked. Exciting. I'm very excited for you guys. I'm very excited for all of you. Five guys. Yeah, it's five guys. It's five you, five guys. Guys, five. The guys, five. The whole of Tate Modern Cafe just heard the vocal ones being blasted from my phone. <laughs> we, we should give him this then. Hulk! Smash! <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Sorry, Tate Modern. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and then what other releases have we got down for 2023? Um, I've uh, got something coming up uh, this summer. Mm. Um, I think it's coming in the end of June. Yep. Um, there's a there's a new record coming up on my hometown label. Actually, I can nice. tell you. Uh, I can also already tell you that it's yeah, it's coming on my hometown label because um, yeah, they have been supporting me so much, and I thought it was. It would be a, a nice gesture to to um, to send them in a demo, and there's also a collab with a with a with a um, another German DJ that's a good friend of mine. Mm. So it's uh, yeah, it's a really it's really worth checking it out when in in, in in at the end of June. So there will be some some promo coming. That's but cool. Now we are concentrating on the at this yeah, point, yeah, yeah. At, at this time. As I said, I like the I like the I like the stuff on big labels, stuff on local label. I think I think it's clever. I think I think it's bringing you stuff from a local area. So I love that. Yeah, and also, yeah, it's 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 kind of the family. I mean, mm. for me, it's always important to make it a kind that 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 I release with people that I um that I enjoy. Like I I don't want to just throw records out and mm. uh, and anonymous people. I it's it's really cool to build a nice connection to people. Mm. I have it with two room to be honest. I have it with um uh, I have it with Kidball as well. They have been really amazing. Mm. And I also have that with, with my hometown label Heimat Liebe. So that's why it's yeah, it's kind of a family that's cool. thing to to release with them as well. That's cool. And then finally obviously we talk about because uh, uh, you're one of my course members, can you sum up how working with us has been on the course and would you recommend it to others? 
um yeah i <laughs> i would definitely recommend it to others um It's been absolutely a pleasure to work with you so far, and okay. it's it's still continuing. I still yeah. keep on learning, because what I what what I really like is that the course keeps is will be updated. Like mm. it's uh, there is updates coming, and it's not um, it's not that it finishes at some point and you go away. <laughs> Next one, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we we still keep on working together. I still join the Wednesday sessions. Whenever I have uh, feel I need some advices, mm. and your advices have always been so on point. Oh, like, I've been very insecure. Like I, I didn't really know how to handle not getting a reply, mm. for example. That I think that was the best piece of advice I got from you. Like to nudge people. Yeah. To get back to people. To not give up and to yeah to to keep on asking. Hey, how is it going? Mm. Did you? Did you have the time to listen to my demo? <laughs> and yeah, you just don't be shy and just um, just try to 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 get back. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. And yeah, it's it's been amazing. Also, yeah, all all the support I'm getting from you has definitely helped me so much. Wicked! I'm so glad to hear. I'm so glad Thank to you. hear. Wicked. Right, gang. This has been fun. Having a guest, shit friend. Thank you so much for being here. This has been so much fun. Yeah, it was big fun. Thanks for your invitation. It was great being here. Yeah. Thanks for all your support. That's all right, dude. Yay. Thank you for being here. Cheers, gang. See you soon. Bye. If you found this interview interesting, consider giving it a like and a comment. It helps with the YouTube algorithm and let me know your biggest takeaway below. Don't forget to follow me on Twitch. I'm back on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays and you can check out the schedule from the link below as well to see who's coming up in my interview series. I'll see you in the next Twitch stream or the next YouTube video. I'll see you soon. Bye.